Today we're going to show you how we did a major modification to our Forerunner. A steel rear bumper with dual swing outs. You are not going to want to miss this one. This is Wanderlust Overland. Overland. This can't be right. After a long in-depth search, we finally went with a bumper from CBI Off-Road. This bumper has everything that we wanted in a rear bumper. It has a place to mount the spare tire, a place for jerry cans for extra fuel and water, really sturdy recovery points, and a extremely well-engineered uh, swing-out system. It's not light at 135 pounds. Add in the swing-outs and it comes to around 200. But we did plan for this when we installed our heavy duty rear springs from Toy Tech Lifts. So the extra weight shouldn't be any problem at all. Now the new bumper wraps around the sides in the back, so we have to actually cut the bottom of this quarter panel off on both sides. We're gonna start by removing as many of these bolts and fasteners that we can find under here that hold this back bumper on. Now while I was under there, I couldn't tell what was behind all this stuff, if there was wires or anything. So to be safe, we're just going to take the whole back end off and make those cuts while it's off the truck. And there it is. Alright, the instructions that we get from CBI say to measure down from this edge by the wheel, five and a quarter inches. And then right where this starts to curve up right here, right about here, measure down five and three quarters of an inch. Then take your trusty painter's tape and connect the dots. And then we need to wrap around the corner here and keep in mind that the top of the new bumper, the uh, plate bumper, is nice and flat. Then, keeps wrapping around. We want to follow this line right here and come to the bottom of this little lip on this black portion. These arrows are to make sure that I cut on the right side of this tape. I can't watch. Tell me when it's over. Is it over yet? Yep. Now the drawback of using an abrasive blade like that in the uh, grinder is it tends to melt the plastic rather than cut it. So we'll have to go back behind with a utility knife and just clean up these cuts a little bit. All right, first we have to do a few things here before we can put the uh, piece back on. This we don't need anymore. And we need to take off the factory um, hitch, which is easy enough if you are going the right way with your ratchet. So let me just say, this is way beyond my comfort zone, but since these are going to be in the way, I'm going to cut them off. Okay, we don't need this tow hitch anymore, or tow hitch. What the hell is this thing? I don't know, but you better... What do you call it? Well, there goes a the light. I have to get up anyway. <laughs> Okay, we don't need this tow hook anymore or these bumper brackets. We'll take them off. Maybe. There, there we go. We also need to take the tailpipe out of this hanger because so, I think it's going to have to come over this way while we put the bumper on. 
The new bumper brackets are going to bolt onto the frame here, so I'm going to grind down the factory weld a little bit to make it nice and flat. Now these spacers are going to go in between our frame rail and our new bumper, and we're using them, putting it up there just to make sure that we have all those welds flattened out that need to be ground down. So this lays nice and flat up against that, and that looks really good. I think we're ready to put the bumper on. Whoops. So I'm underneath here trying to bolt to the frame and I notice that this little bracket here is touching the tube on the new bumper so we just bent it up by hand. Got it up out of the way. And action. Alright we're going to bolt the bumper on so we have it aligned with the frame kind of. Now this spacer has to go in between the new bumper and the frame and then these little spacer dealies go on the bottom side of the new bumper and then the larger diameter ones go back here with the little spacer thing and washers so you can see we have the bumper bolted up to the frame now this is the time to check your gap where you made the cut in your body um, and ours looks really good, nice and even. It's about maybe a half an inch. You want a good sizable gap here because of all the flexing your body and your frame is going to do against each other. You don't want this to hit the bumper. But uh, yeah, now we get to take it back off. What? I thought we were done. No, we have to put this edging along <sighs> the bottom of the body here. You can unbolt it. Remember those bolts that we took out of the stock trailer hitch? We're going to reuse them in these two holes right here, going into the frame. And there's two up and in the back here. The hard part's over. Now let's put the swing iron. Swing irons? Don't make me crawl underneath this bit too many times. Well, the hard part's over. Now let's put the swing arms on. To put the swing arms on, they give us some really nice sealed bearings. Two bearings go on the bottom, and then one comes on the top along with an oil seal. So we'll just uh, take a plastic hammer and try to tap these in. They're tight. Now we put this cap bracket on. It slides over the top of your swing out arm and then bolts onto the side here. And again, this is another tight fit, so we'll use the persuader. I'm going to install this latch. It's pretty simple. There's just four little bolts here. Now I'm going to adjust this latch so it closes nice and tight. Next I'm going to add the bump stop. Now the curved end faces towards me. The spare tire carrier comes with a bunch of adjustment to it. Uh, depending on what size tires you're running. We're going to keep our spare tire low so we can hopefully see out the back side. Now you can get this mount straight up and down or angled like ours. Angled looks racier. 
The can carrier holds two five gallon NATO style cans or you can get a carrier that just carries one. I'm loving this drop down table. I almost wish we had gotten a second one for the other side now. Now we're just finishing up on all the little things. We have uh, our CB antenna mounted. We have our high lift mounted. Now I'm putting in a license plate light. It goes right here. License plate will be here. Uh, we have to plumb in the air line coming from our compressor. Um, few little, oh, we do have to do a little modification to the exhaust pipe, the tailpipe, because it does actually rub on the, the uh, bumper, but that's no big deal. We still have a few things to do back here. Wire our antenna, move the camera, and put some lights in. And I really want to take this moment to thank everyone that responded to all our Instagram posts while we were installing this. They were a great help and uh, some motivation for us to get through this. Thank you. Come on, you're up. <laughs> Today we're going to show you... <laughs> Today we're going to show you how we did a major modification to our Forerunner. We put in a, a dual... A rear steel and dual swing outs. Do it again. Rear steel bump. You are not going to want to miss this one. And have better work. If this is your first time watching one of our videos and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell if you want to be notified.